guys welcome back and today we're doing the next part for what if the z fights train with goku finally i know it's been a few months but i had a bit of an issue with this wife it'll all be explained at the end but last time we saw how the battle against the likes of boo would end with everything ending after a fusion between goku and raditz destroys Majin Buu with ease now today i'm doing something slightly different than i normally would do and like i said earlier please stick around at, to the end to hear my explanation and once again thanks for watching now we join our heroes 10 years after the battle with Boo, where we see Goku facing off against Goten. The pair share a nod as Goten goes into his Super Saiyan state. With Goten rushing Goku, the likes of Goku sticks in his base and starts dodging and blocking the attacks. With this annoying Goten, he eventually jumps up to his Super Saiyan 2 form, and this makes Goku jump up to his Super Saiyan form, and the pair begin to clash with one another. Eventually Goten lands a blow on his dad, with the boy letting out a cheer as Goku picks himself up off the floor, rubbing the bruise on his face where his son was hit. Tell his son he cheated, they weren't supposed to go past Super Saiyan 1. However, Goten says, well, you cheated by going Super Saiyan, so we'll call it even. With Goku sort of proud of his son, after all his growth currently in power is massive, Goku is so happy to see how much stronger he has got. With him telling this to his son, and telling him how well he's been doing with his training. However, a shout of, Goku, it's time, we need to head off. With Goku looking over to see Chi Chi, Raditz, so who is there with 18 and his daughter, who has been named Gine. Goku nodding, he tells Goten to get ready, as they need to head off. They are running a little bit late. Raditz shouts out to his nephew, The faster we get there, the faster you can see that little girlfriend of yours, nephew. Goten blushes, explaining how She's not his girlfriend, they're just friends. With everyone laughing at this, soon they look a bit more serious. They know where they're going and why they're going there. And all start to fly off, with Chi Chi getting picked up by Goku and flown. Now over at Kame House, we see the likes of an old Krillin out on the beach, meditating. With his daughter, who has grown a lot over the last few years, not only in size and power, just maturity as well. With the pair out there meditating, the two spend a few minutes talking to one another. Krillin explains to his daughter how she will be the next generation of Turtle School. She will have to be ready to not only take up the mantle of the name, but also the mantle of the Earth's Defenders. With the girl laughing, saying how she is more than ready. Alongside this, she isn't alone when it comes to defending Earth. As people like Trunks, Gine, Gohan, Nappa and Goten, with Krillin smirking, hearing his daughter bring up Goten, as he teases the girl about her crush on the boy. This getting a reaction out of her, they have a little bit of a tussle before a shout from Roshi saying that they need to be heading off grabs their attention. The light atmosphere drops dramatically and the pair get ready to leave. With Krillin grabbing Snake and flying off with her, Marin takes hold of Roshi and starts flying off. Over at Gohan's house, we see the boy walking out of his house, wearing his gi, having picked up training again recently, for a few reasons. With him looking back in, he shouts out for his everyone to get out, with a razor soon following out of the house, and then a young boy, with blonde hair like a razor and wearing gi similar to Goku's. With the family having a little talk, Gohan says that it's time they need to get going. He picks up a razor and looks over to his son, telling Nappa to follow along with him. The boy nods as he flies off. Over on the lookout, we see the likes of Tien and Yamcha, who have both began to grey quite a bit, keeping up with some light training with one another. The pair talk to Dende, who has recently gotten into the flow of being Guardian. After all, he was hired a bit later on than he was in canon. And the pair are just spending a bit of their time on Earth. They normally spend time training in Overworld, but recently they felt a bit more welcome at home. But... After a few minutes of training, the likes of Dende tells them that they really should get going. You know, they're going to be late. With the pair nodding, they soon start to fly off. With all the powers converging on one another, the group spend a few minutes catching up. It's been a little bit since they've really had a chance to catch up like this, before all starting to head off towards Capsule Corp, where the group see Vegeta, Bulma, Trunks and Buller, all hanging around outside, with them giving the group a wave and sharing a smile. Before a sad look comes over everyone's face, they all sort of know why they're here. 
We're then walking around the corner to the back area of Cultural Corp. We see a pond with a few flowers rested around it and a grave sits with a name being written on it. Go on asks how it happened with Vegeta saying how it happened last week. It luckily happened while he slept but it looks like his age finally caught up with him. I didn't even get to say goodbye or thank him for everything he had done for me. I will miss Nappa. As Vegeta walks out and places a scouter on top of the gravestone. Everyone else spends a few minutes sharing some words about the saying. With him being loved by everyone, the team is actually quite sad at the loss. However, Goku steps up and he speaks and it sort of lifts the spirits of everyone. You know, I remember when he first showed up on Earth and destroyed the city within the first few seconds. <laughs> everyone looks up at Goku with a bit of anger and also sadness, while Vegeta looks guilty. But once we got to know him... I have never met anyone who cared about a planet that wasn't his own. More than Nappa, he loved this planet. He cared for every living thing on it. He tended to gardens, he helped the kids, he did everything he could. I think he tried to redeem himself, but he did that years ago. Alongside just caring for this planet, he molded the next generation of not only Saiyans, but fighters. All of the fighters he molded would defend this planet. Not just for themselves and for everyone else, but for Nappa. And I know you will all do us proud. And you'll, I know you will do him proud. Hopefully he's not alone up in the clouds. And hopefully Grandpa Gohan's looking after you in Overworld, Nappa. And hopefully King Kai's training you. Hopefully when we join you, you'll be much stronger. We'll miss you. For everyone hearing this, it lifts their spirits a little bit. And slowly everyone starts to head inside, where they celebrate a little bit. It's just a party in Nappa's name. With the Debris still being pretty sad, being the saddest in the group, he was pretty much a member of their family. Everyone sides to try and help lift people's spirits. Goku and Raditz walk over to Vegeta and offer to train with him. With Vegeta being a bit reluctant at first, he soon accepts with the three heading into the gravity chamber. Goku and Raditz help Vegeta get his emotions out through a fight. Knowing this will be the only way Vegeta will ever get his sadness out for his loss. After a bit of a spa, Vegeta actually breaks into tears almost before stopping himself, refusing to show his weakness in front of these two. As they soon join the party again, with Vegeta feeling a bit better. Goten and Marin try to lift the spirits of Trunks and Buller, with the likes of Nappa, Gohan's kid, helping out as well. Trunks being really down as well. Nappa was like a massive uncle to him, almost like a grandfather. He was really close to him, so it's quite sad for him to lose him. But after a bit of time trying to cheer him up, Trunks does lighten up a little bit. After all, being when he's surrounded by his friends like this, the people he has always known and will always know, it does help him a little bit. And finally, Snake, 18, Chi Chi, and even the likes of Yomcha try to make Bulma feel a bit better. He didn't have the same relationship Vegeta and Nappa had, or even Trunks and Nappa had, but they were still close, and he was still family. And after a bit of time, the party slowly begins to end. People start heading off home, to grieve on their own. With the world entering a massive time of peace, years and years pass and things are peaceful. The fighters of Earth live out a mostly normal life. Sure, some threats appear, a god shows up at one point, and then there's this weird tournament thing, but after accessing the realm of the gods, no one could really stop the Saiyans. Alongside that, the humans are massively strong as well. Earth enters a time of peace, and soon, the mantle of guardians of Earth is passed down to the younger generation. Everyone steps up and defends the world, and the planet truly enters a time of peace. And this is where the story ends for this what if. This is my first ever what if and I was having a really hard time writing an ending for it. I'm really connected to it and I love it. But I just couldn't find something I liked. So I decided I would delay the events of Super until the after the events of End of Z. However, the events of End of Z were slightly different. Nice happy tournament. It's the loss of a close fighter. A close friend. I felt like this was the most 
proper thing I could do. And I hope everyone enjoyed it. The events of Super would play out a lot easier because I have delayed the events of Super and also because the group is just massively ahead. I won't be doing this for other what ifs, don't worry about that. Things like what if Raditz came to Earth early where Goku and Raditz are super strong. Stuff like that won't happen here. At the end of the day, this is a story about the humans and I couldn't keep the humans relevant going into Super. There was ways I could do it, but I just couldn't find ways I liked and ways that didn't feel like very forced. Super was probably easiest way to do it, but I just couldn't get it to work. I took a few attempts at writing for a GT version of this final part, but I just couldn't like it, and I just never got something I enjoyed. Eventually I stumbled across this idea. I worked around it for a few days and I liked it. Just a nice send off to a what if I loved. I started my channel doing this and it's here. And it's weird to end it, but hopefully this means I can keep growing. I hope I've gotten better, and I've recently started my second what if again, which was the MCU one. So I just wanted to find a nice send off for this. I love the humans and I wanted to keep them relevant, but Super and GT have too big of a jump. The Battle of Gods would be pretty similar, except a bit later on at a different wedding. The children would be much more relevant and maybe even partake in some of the training with the gods because it was delayed and it's just a whole lot of stuff that would change and make the story easier and not too interesting to listen to so i worked on this i'll give a basic rundown battle of gods is easier goku still becomes the super saiyan god resurrection f never happens no one ever really leaves earth so it doesn't ever come around the likes of Universe 6 vs 7 tournament would probably still happen, but everyone would be slightly older and the team would probably be slightly different. The Goku Black Arc would probably happen, but like I said, more Saiyans, stronger humans, easier fight. And finally, the Tournament of Power would be pretty straightforward as well, if it even happened. This would be a much more mature Goku, so it might not even come round. And of course, the Broly movie wouldn't happen. And if I was to delay the moral arc as well, I would say a much older Goku would have an easier time with UI. So, yeah, that's how I see things. I hope people don't mind this, and I hope people can enjoy this part for what it is. Just a farewell to this. For those who are wondering when the next generation comes around, Goten and Marin would get together. The son of... Gohan is a, something I should probably talk about. I felt like I just wanted to give Nappa something. And Gohan and Nappa had a really nice relationship. Gohan had a son, so he named it after Nappa. It's just a nice little thing to him. Yeah, I can't really think what else to say, except I hope everyone loved this What If. I hope people enjoyed this part. And everyone who's joined me for, throughout my journey of writing What Ifs, I really do hope you continue to watch and enjoy what I produce. Um, yeah, so for now, I hope you all have a good day, a great night, and hopefully I'll see you next time.